does not understand what it's all about. Therefore, he, he you know, when it, so when he, he wants us to get to that place where we've been changed. And, and the gospel, receiving the gospel is, is a message of salvation, but it's a message of transformation. And, 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 and God, in the time that we're coming in and, and, and Jesus is coming back, and we need to understand he's looking for those that he's going to look past if we praise him with our lips and our mouths, but our hearts be far off. Because he wants transformation in the heart. He wants transformation in the way we think, the way we act, and what we believe. He desires transformation from his people. Amen? As a father who believed that he planted a seed, he, ex he has an expectation of a harvest. Can I get an amen? And God is looking for a harvest. He, he planted the seed of love. He's looking for a harvest of love. Not love in mouth, but love in action. Everybody understand? So I want us to just listen to the song. Then I'm going to go into the word. Play the song. And I want you to write down. Turn. Y'all get my granddaddy up these steps here. I want you to write down that first part. I'll never be the same after being with you. I just want you to write down that part. I'll never be the same. It's not, a, it's not enough to never be the same. I'll never be the same after being with you. I want you to write down that part. I won't ever be the same. Oh, no, 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 no. You've done something for me. Something for me. Hold on, yeah. Hold on, yeah. I won't ever be the same. You fix me up. You turn me around. Oh, you planted my feet. Said that part. Guess what? He says, I'm changing after You're being with changing. you. I want you to write that down. He says, I'm changing, but not, not on my own after Every being with you. I'll never be the same after being with you. So he's saying that in the songs, on the song saying that after being with you, I'll never be the same because being with you brings forth change. It brings you a change. Come on, give God some praise. The song says, I'll never be the same. But he says, after being with you. It's funny when you look at life for real that people, many of us was never the same after being with somebody. Amen? Anybody been in that situation that you were innocent? Anybody was innocent or or, you know, your life was going in a positive direction and you met somebody and that, 
and after you met this person, you was never be, you, <laughs> you, were, you, was, you was never the same again. In other words, you sometimes we was bitter, we was angry, we was unforgiving. We ran into the, how many of us ran into the wrong person? You know what I'm saying? Come on, some of us raising our hand, we were the wrong person. Come on, hallelujah, 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 come on. And somebody was never the same. Some of us, you had an innocent young lady, a young man, they were a virgin. And when they ran into you, they would never be the same. They, their life was changed. Some people were never, ain't never tried drugs, ain't never got high, never. But when they ran into some of them, the homeboys, they was never the same. They changed. There was a change after being with you. That's in the natural. Some brothers right now sit in prison because guess what? They ran into the wrong home group and they, they were swatted. In middle school, they was all A honor schools. They wanted to be cool, fit in when they got in high school. They ran with the wrong group and now they'll never be the same after being with that group they hung in. Because from now on, they got a prison record. They got to go through all that drama. So being with somebody can change you. Being in the wrong church can change you. I know many people who've been, who were more, they came to the house of God and they, they became more interested in going to church than they came to getting to know God. And then they got into certain things that happened in that church. Somebody looked at them wrong in whatever situation. And they became, I, I, see, I know this because we've been on the street ministry. Everybody's been on the street. And you see people, they be turned off on church after being with them. So it's interesting that after being with someone, someone's life can never be the same. There's a change. There's a change. See, that's what, and what's interesting about this is that we can believe this concept. Many of us are witnesses to this concept, right or wrong. After being with someone, may, after being in a fellowship, it, ain't even, it, it doesn't have to be sex. It ain't even have to be nonsexual. sexual Just you could be home. But after being with someone, you might never be the same. You were changed. But what's amazing God began to show me because he, and he talked last week, and I don't know what it is about this. God keeps having me in this, in this place where he talked about last week, he talked about truth, the spirit of truth. And God is really stressing this situation because, you know, like the song said, after being with you, I'll never be the same. Something changed in me. And the thing that's amazing that seems to be like conflict in the house of God is that people are saying they are encountering God in the house of God, but they are still the same. But even in the natural, we say that we can encounter someone and yet never be the same. But yet when it's talking about encountering the most powerful, he is righteous, he is holiness, Yet, with some people, there is no change. After being with you, I'll never be the same. And it was so funny, and God began, man, that thing just stayed on my spirit. It's like, you know, because I don't know about you. I don't want to go to church to be entertained. I don't want to go to church to be a part of some social gathering. I don't want to go to church looking for a hookup. And that means business-wise, that means enterprise. That's what not, he said, my house shall be called the house of? He said, my house shall be the house of what? So prayer means dialogue. He says, when you come to the church, it should be a place of prayer where you are going through something, where you are hurt or you are broken, and you say, God, I need to hear from you. Because I'm tired of where I've been. I'm tired of what I'm going through. And I don't want to be the same. But God says, for you not to be the same, you have to encounter something. The one who's going to make you change. Amen? I can't give you a sermon. I can't give you a sermon on, 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 on what it is to be black in America. I can't give you a sermon on politics. I can't give you a sermon on houses and cars 
if the problem is you don't want to be the same. Because the Bible says in those things do not consist life. To preach those things do not bring life. And I don't know about you, when I was in the world, I got enough of temporary feeling good for the problem to still be there. Anybody know what I'm talking about? In other words, you know, when you're in the world, you get enough of, you know, when we was kids here, we get mama would give you a, a candy to you know, quiet down or temporary good. I don't want another, don't, God, I don't want another man. I don't want another woman. I don't want another house. I don't want another car. I don't want another thing that's going to make me feel good for a moment. I, find, I, I believe after being, if, if the song should say after being with you, I'll never be the same. It's me I'm tired of. It's me I'm tired of, and I don't want to go to church. I, I, I don't want to be coming to the house of God to hear, Pastor, that was a good word. No, 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 I don't want to hear a good word. I want to hear the word. I want an encounter with something that will never allow me to be the same. Something that will prick my heart and cause me to desire change. It's funny, that's why I believe that the, I believe that the um, apostles understood that. That's why when they go to 1 Corinthians, go to 2 Corinthians 4 or 5 for a minute. See, the problem is, see, true change comes from a heart being broken. It comes from when your heart is no longer hard any longer. Because I don't know, everybody sitting here, including me, that when God desired change from us at first, and we might have heard something, he ran into this. Can I get an amen? And in certain areas of our life, he's still running into your ideals, your concepts, your principles, your foolish wisdom. What you think is truth. You know, I, that's what I told Last week, God said, truth is an interesting thing. People debate about it. People argue about it. People become confused. Like, what did Pilate say? He said, what is truth? The world asks what is truth because it can't, it don't understand it. But I believe the apostles understood it. Read, read verse 4. 2 Corinthians 4 or 5, verse 5, I mean. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For we do not preach ourselves. See, I believe they knew about it because they understood in my own life there's nothing I can preach in myself that's going to bring change to you. Go ahead. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus. But we preach Christ Jesus as Lord. That's funny because that word Lord means ruler. You are not Lord. He is the Lord. We preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus. He said that the apostles understood that if I don't want to be the same after being one, then who I, I, gotta, I have to be with someone who can bring change. Did anybody, have anyone ever been with someone that you thought was going to bring change? Come on, everybody in this room should be raising your hand. You thought that person was going to bring, anybody hooked up with someone one time, you thought, oh, this is it, I love him. Oh, I love her. You thought that person was going to change. Anybody got a job, got made money, thought that was going to bring change? What it did was it made you feel good temporarily. Can I get an amen? amen? But after a while, you started murmuring, complaining about the thing you thought was going to bring change. Are we going to be real up in here today? See, the apostles understood. They said, I can't preach myself. But I ran into somebody. I connected. I had an encounter with something that, that I have to preach that transformed my very essence of life. It was real. He said, we preach not ourselves, but who? And ourselves what? 
He said, when I preach myself, I'm going to preach myself as one who is a servant to the one who has the power to bring change. Amen. I'm going to preach it. I'm going to preach the gospel. When I put myself involved, it's going to be one who is humbled and submitted to the one who has the authority and the power to transform a heart. Because I realize all I, have to, all I have is the power to play with you. Motivated speakers, all they have is the power to play with you. Make you feel good about you. And make you feel like you're going to conquer, conquer the world. Until you run into an obstacle that a motivated speaker can't speak you through like cancer. Or depression or oppression. Where you need the word of God. But then he, watch it, he said, but I preach Christ Jesus. Let's see who he was preaching. Let's go to John's 1, 14. Read John's 1, 14. John chapter 1, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And the word became flesh. He said the word became what? Flesh. And the word became flesh. What does that mean? Meaning the word of God is spiritual. John 63 says my word is spirit and life. He said but the word became flesh. In other words, Mary didn't have a husband. When she was impregnated, she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit of God. And inside that body of Jesus uh, inside that flesh was the spirit of God the spirit of the word of God go ahead and the word became flesh and dwelt among us yes and we beheld his glory and we beheld the word that Jesus as the glory of God go ahead the glory as of the only begotten of the father we beheld that glory as the only begotten as the only son begotten by God himself See, that's why they say we must preach Christ Jesus, this, the word made flesh, because he's the only one that has been begotten. In other words, came out of God, who is the creator of the heaven and the earth, where are all things about him. He is the one that is perfect in all his ways. In other words, I want, I, I, we perceive this glory because in him he is perfect in all his ways. So therefore, because I am imperfect, because I am flawed, because I am sinful, I need to be in fellowship with one who is perfect in all his ways. Come on, somebody. See, I keep bumping my head. I keep running into walls. I keep playing with this circle of life, feeling good one day, never having victory, never achieving, accomplishing real life because the bottom line is I need to be in fellowship with the one who created life. I tried to be in fellowship with a female, but that didn't work. I tried to be in fellowship with a job, but that didn't work either. I tried to be in fellowship with money, but that didn't work either. All those things made me feel good for a moment. But then I found myself going right back to needing something else. I, I needed some more drinks. I needed some more drugs. I needed to get high some more. I had to escape from the life I was living. Because guess what? I was not in fellowship with the one who was perfect and changed my ways and put me on a pathway to bring glory to my life. So they said, I can't preach nothing else but Christ Jesus. Because he's the one that came out of God. He is the son of the living God. He came out of God himself. He came out of the very one who created the heavens and the earth, the sea and the fullness of He is the creator of all things. He is the designer of all things. He is the one that formed you out of the dust and blew into your nostrils and made you a living soul. And that's why when you take your last breath from the dust you came, from the dust you return. And yet we think we know more than him. Yet we want to try to achieve perfection without the perfecter. Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, you're the blind leading the blind into a ditch. You can't see and those who follow you, follow you into hell. But they feel good every once in a while while they're doing it. Because I got to throw, throw you a treat so you won't get off track. 
Amen. He says, I'm the word made flesh. I need to be in fellowship with the one who begotten by God, the only begotten son of God. He said, that's why I love that song. If you heard that song after being with you, who am I with? I'll never be the same. I'm with God in the flesh. I'm with the word of God who spoke. How many of you know that God said? That means he spoke. That was Jesus. When you want to see God, when you want to see Jesus at the beginning, go to the beginning of your Bible and see he said. That, because see, God don't need to speak. That's the word. See, God, that's why he said, let us, he said, let us, letting you know he was not by himself when he created man. He said, let us make man in our image after that. Who was with him? The word. What word? The word that came out of him, his son. And this, he made the word and he prepared a body for the word. Come on, y'all. Because why did he prepare a body? Because man could not find anything to fellowship to bring him to his perfection. See, man couldn't find anything to fellowship with that would bring him out of his pain and his hurt and his brokenness, to bring him out of his rejection, to bring him out of his deprived state. So God had to come down himself to fellowship with man, to show man the king he was called to be. To show woman the queen she was called to be. So the word was made flesh. And what was it? Go ahead. And it was full of grace. And it was full of grace. Everybody say grace. The word was full of, the word was full, watch it. it. He was full of that which you did not deserve. Y'all got it. He came down. But he's coming down not because there was anybody good down here. He came down not because there was anyone down here worthy to come down for it. He came down because God so loved. Oh, what, what kind of love is it that will love those who actually turn around and tell you, give you your butt to kiss? What kind of love that will love those who will not even acknowledge where their breath come from? What, what kind of love that will love those who will reverence or honor it, not at all. He came down because God loved us. Your father was absolutely love. And I love y'all know my favorite. He commanded his love for us when we were yet sinners. In other words, his love for us was not because we were, matter of fact, we was ripped up. But why did he come down? Because he loved you. Even in our book, come on, we sin in a line, and God ain't, he, his message to you is not, you're going to hell. His message to you is not that he wants to destroy you. The Bible says in Mark 16, he says, those who believe shall be saved, but those who do not believe shall be damned. God said, you damn yourself. He ain't trying, he didn't come down to damn you. Your unbelief in the word chooses you to damn yourself. Why? Because you choose to move in a way that does not bring you glory or God. You choose to move as a blind man or a blind woman trying to find something that makes you feel good when you were called to be the light of the world. But see, God says, after being with you, it must have been something about the first time he was with us. Because he, evidently he wasn't the same because he wanted to come get us. Y'all ain't hear that. Y'all don't understand it. It must have been something before sin came into place that even the angels say, who is man? Who is man that you, your, the thoughts you think so highly of him? Who is this man, God, that you have such admiration for him? Who is this man that your thoughts are not evil but to give him hope in a future? But he said he was full of grace. He was full of, he was full of grace. Grace means unmerited. Meaning he was full of the love and things that we, that we did not deserve. See, that's what, see, that was good. Because we needed the grace. But watch this. I'm a, but, I'm, but I'm going to preach on the second one. Go ahead. Full of grace and truth. He was full of, I said, truth. He was full of truth. 
truth what man has been debating and quarreling about, what man is confused about, what black men are confused, white men are confused, Spanish men are confused, what men are confused about, we are just like Pilate, what is truth? Men argue all day long, what is truth? He said he was full of truth. Then I began to put it together, man of God. After being with you, I'll never be the same. After being with truth, somebody going to get it. After being with truth, I'll never be the same because every lie becomes untangled. Everything that I believed, everything that was leading me down a pathway of destruction becomes exposed when I'm in fellowship with truth. Y'all right. better get this. See, I don't, not your truth, God's truth. See, people say that, you know, when you get saved, God don't, you know that, you know, you're all right. No, he said he was full of grace and truth. And when you have been in fellowship with truth, how can you remain the same? To reject truth is to reject God himself. Y'all better, we better hear him. That's why, y'all better get this. That's why I was so impressed. And I, I, I go and when I asked God, I said, God, what does your church look like? What does it act like? What is it all about? And he led me to the book of Thessalonians 1 and 2. And I've been studying it for the last two weeks and digesting it and eating it because Paul wrote a letter to the Thessalonians that began to give me understanding what the church looked like. When it begins to embrace truth, it became a church that was never the same. I don't mean this, this, what we have, this church today, where we one minute saved and the next minute we not saved. We act like we cannot come out of sin. We, we act like we cannot be delivered. We act like we cannot be kept. We act like we cannot love. We act like, like we cannot have victory. I'm talking about a church that begins to receive the truth. Matter of fact, I want to read. Go to 1 Thessalonians 2 and read. I want everybody to stand up. We're going to read it together. 12 and 13. When you get there, I want everyone to stand up for the reading of the word. We're going to read 12 and 13 together. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 12 and 13. On a count of three. One, two, three. That ye would walk, walk worthy of God, God who has called you unto his kingdom and glory. For this, this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because, because when you received the word of God, God which you have heard from us, you receive it not as the word of men, but as it is the truth, truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh working in you who believe. Somebody give God some praise. They said when you were called into the kingdom of God, you were not, see the problem with some of us today is you are getting impressed with the messenger. The messenger is an example. He's only merely an example of the one he's preaching about. And even as he or she is an example, God may allow you to see their flaws. He may allow you to see their, that he makes, they are caused them to be transparent. Why? So you can see God's glory. This morning, me, we were reading the book of Samuel and the, and the man of God, Mike, was pointing out David's imperfections. But even in David's imperfection, why did God allow David's imperfections to be revealed? To let you know, don't worship David. But even in his imperfections, because I have anointed him, because I have called him, follow the God he's following. The same God that can raise him above his imperfections can raise you above your imperfection. Oh, 
my God. See, some of us, the problem with you is that you have become stagnant looking at if you're the one perfect. No, he is perfect in all his ways. And as you draw close to him, he begins to expose your imperfections. But he knew you had imperfections when he called you out of darkness into his glorious light. So when people see your imperfections, but they see you on the pathway of righteousness, they say, what kind of God, uh, what kind of God can love you in your imperfections? And then he tells you to tell them, be ready to give an answer about a God that can pull me through me. About a God that's greater than me. A God that looked past my faults and saw that I needed him. He looked past my faults and saw that I needed him. I needed someone perfect. See, y'all heard me say it before, but I'm going to say it again. If you want to pre- if you want to perfect basketball, you don't go to the court and play with them brothers at the port. You go get your game with the very best if you want to perfect it. If you want to be an average player, then go to the courtyards. But those who look at it as a life of living, they go to the professionals. Why? Because they want to excel their game. Y'all better get this. He's saying, we're going to get this. He's saying those who want a perfected life, a life that is mature, whole, and complete, then come to the one who came out the bosom. Come to the one who walks upright. Come to the one who is righteous in God's sight. Come in fellowship. Answer, what call? You are called into the fellowship of Christ Jesus. You are called, according to Corinthians, you are called into the fellowship of the one, of the word in flesh. What word? The word of truth. You are called into fellowship with truth. Why? Because guess what? Guess what? After being with that, you will never be the same. After fellowshipping with truth, you will never be the same. And sometimes when you are in fellowship with truth, I don't know about you, but I find a battle going on inside of me. Come on, come on, come on. I find a battle because the truth that's a, the truth that has invaded me is exposing the lies that have been, has guided me. The truth that has invaded me shows me that my mindset toward people are wrong. The truth that has invaded me shows me that I cannot hate and hold malice in my heart. The truth that has invaded me has shown me that I cannot not lie, deceive, or manipulate people. The truth that has invaded me show me I cannot be prejudiced or racist. The truth that has invaded me has invaded me to show me how to walk up right before my father. The truth that has invaded me has changed me. The truth invaded me It changed me because it spoke on some things that messed me up. It spoke on the truth of the word, began to speak on some issues that, can I talk about myself for a minute and how he brought me out? The truth that, um, that messed me up, I want a good hold up. Let's go to First Thessalonians. It began to speak on some things that, because when I was walking in my own and, and doing my own thing, and then I was called into the fellowship of Christ Jesus, the Word. Uh, in, in First Thessalonians, it uh, well, it was one area that it, the truth began to like hit me. Matter of fact, let's go to Thessalonians 4. Let's read the first, let's read the verse on down. See, I want to show you that sometimes you can be living a certain way and then you hear the truth and you were called into the fellowship of the word of God. See, that's why you know what the devil do. The devil will try to tell you, he'll say the whole Bible, it was written by a white man. Uh, the whole Bible, it ain't all true. Because uh, watch this, if you believe a little bit of lie then you believe it all a lie. See, there is no partial truth in God. And didn't no white man write the Bible because if he did, he would have glorified himself instead of a spirit. 
There's nothing in the Bible that tells you to bow down. I don't care what they painted on a picture with blue eyes. There's nothing in the Bible that tells you to bow down to somebody with white and blue eyes and long hair. It's not in the scripture. When those who speak like that, because they are ignorant and never had read the Bible. Because if they had read the Bible, they would see that God does not glorify the skin that you are in. He's a spirit. He said those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He wants to evolve you out of the flesh you in and get you to walk in a spiritual realm where there is truth. See, when you walk in truth, you're not walking as a black man. When you walk in truth, you're not walking as a white man. When you walk in truth, you're not walking as a yellow man. When you walk in the absolute truth, you're walking as God. He says, read the verse. See, this is what happened to me. Sometimes you think you got it going on and and then you hear the word, and then the word begins. Go ahead, read it. First Thessalonians mm -hmm. chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead. Finally then, brethren, finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. Now watch this. I love it because it says in my Bible, as for, for other matters, brethren and sisters, we instruct you. See, a true apostle, a true pastor has come to instruct you. Why? Because watch this. When something is built, for it to get, for it to be worked, for it to be moved and developed in a, in a way of perfection, you must get instructions. Come on. For you to get the best outcome on something that has been created, you must, the, the one who created it must give you the instructions to be able to operate it and get the best outcome. Our problem sometimes, especially as men, I'm a, you know, we sometimes say, I got this. And then at the end, when we see a couple of screws left over, we're like, they, they don't matter. But see, if the one who created it wanted screws left over, he would have told you that. See, we try to tell God, it don't matter that she's not my wife. I can kiss on her anyway. We try to tell God, it don't matter he's not my husband. I can lay with him anyway. Because I like him. And my, rule, and my truth is greater than your truth. The Bible said, let every man be a liar, for God is the truth. Watch what he say. Go ahead. We urge you mm -hmm. in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. Look what he said. He said, you hear him? He said that you ought to abound more and more in our instructions that you may please God. He says, what I want you to understand that I'm only preaching here, Christ Jesus, not myself, that you may abound more and more in the word, that you may walk and live a life that pleases God. You ain't about, you know, I don't care if you ain't, you ain't, you don't have to please me. Matter of fact, of every word I'm preaching, I'm, I'm subjected to it to please God too. So when you come to the church, he said to the, he said to the, the church of Thessalonians, I want you to abound more and more in hearing what we are preaching, that you can, that you can do what? Live a life that will please God. God. I want you to abound in truth. That's why when you get ready to read the Bible, the devil want to make you sleepy. Why? He don't want you to hear the truth. He don't want you to abound in truth. He wants you to abound in your own intellect, your own wisdom. But the Bible says that your wisdom to God is foolishness. Your own ability to rationalize things. I don't care if you got a PhD. Your PhD can't exceed the truth. You ever notice when you want to read, uh, you get sleepy. You ever notice when you want to read, uh, somebody want to call you. You ever notice when you want to sit down and fellowship with the lover of your soul. Somebody wants to distract you. Someone wants to move you. Why? Because, you know, because like, after being with you, uh, after being with you, uh, after sitting down and meditating with you, I'll never be the same. See, the problem is we're looking for somebody else to change. And God says, come fellowship with me. Because if you fellowship with me, I'll teach you how to love the unlovable. I'll teach you how to forgive the unforgivable. I'll teach you how to give and not take. I'll teach you how to be holy and righteous after being with me. 
I promise you, through the Holy Ghost, you will never be the same. This church that's being built today, they don't have a fellowship with the Spirit of God because how can you have a fellowship with the Spirit of truth and yet you remain the same? Is there no power in the Word of God? There is. God says, he didn't say, watch this, he didn't say you had to change. He said, there's going to be some fruit. He said, come on now. He said, you might not be like this or something. He said, but I, when my word go forth, it's going to bear some fruit, 40, 60, 100 fold. He said, if the vine don't bear no fruit, that's not my seed. Cut it off and cast it into the darkness. What's, how you going to fellowship with life and there can be no change? That's absolutely impossible. It's like fellowshipping with water and talking about you're not going to get wet. He says, ooh. Keep reading. Verse mm -hmm. For you know what commandments we gave you <coughs> in the Lord Jesus. He said, you know what commandments we gave you in the Lord Jesus. Go ahead. For this is the will of God. Wait a minute. Hold up. If I say the will of God. He said, when I'm preaching to you the word of God, I'm giving you the will of God. Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. He said, I'm going to give you, here be. He's telling you right now, anytime you see that in the Bible, pay close attention. He said, here is the truth of God. Go ahead. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, mm -hmm. that you should abstain from sexual immorality. He said, the will of God is that... Watch this. In John 72 and John 17, he, he said, my word is truth. Yeah. Am I right or wrong? He said, my word is spirit. My word is what? My word is spirit and truth. And he said, I have sanctified you. He said, when you obey truth and you are operating according to my word, my word will keep you from sexual immorality. Yeah. Woo! My God. My God. My God. So, don't, so we got to stop saying I can't do it. I can do all things through Christ, the word of God, that has the power to sustain me, that has the power to keep me. Oh, don't tell me that. When I receive the truth, the truth gives me the power to treat my body as it was meant to be treated. That's not my opinion. He's talking to the Thessalonians. He said, I, he said, I hope that I bow and I bow that you, that you stay in the word of God. He said, now let me deal with you about something. See, they don't think they're not apostle. You always talk. No, no, that's the word. That's the word. He said that you may what? That you may what? Abstain from sexual immorality. He said, that's the word. He said, I sanctify. If you are saint, if you and I, come on. I didn't say it wasn't going to be a tussle. Come on and say hallelujah. Because your flesh want to get its groove on. Your flesh really want to be like, I don't want to be the saint. You know what I'm saying? After being with you, I'm changing. But how many of you know when it's out of order, you're changing for the worse? You lose you. You lose the love for yourself. And you find yourself doing things that you never said you would do. And God is crying because he called you to be greater. And God says, give up your partner and come to truth. Surrender that death and come into life. And you will be singing, I'll never be the same. After being with you, see, after you be with truth, no brother or sister will ever use you again. Because when they knock on your door, they're going to find holiness. They're going to find the light going to shine so bright, even their agenda going to be exposed. How you know I wasn't? Yeah, I see it. Why? I'm changing. I'm not the same. Well, last week, uh, that was last week. You don't know who I've been in fellowship with this week. Last week, you can come over. Girl, you was doing this and doing that. Yeah. But I answered a phone call. I answered a phone call, and I was in fellowship with the Son of God. 
And when I began to fellowship him, fellowship with him, and I began to sit down and eat his word, I began to realize I began to change. I'm changing, I'm changing. I, my eyes began to open up and I began to realize that this body is a temple of the living God. I began to realize how holy and special it is. I began to find out that I'm, unique, I'm uniquely made. I'm a peculiar person. I began to find out that my father called me to be a royal priesthood. Sorry. I'm changing. And then you got them demons that are going to come knocking to my, no, no, don't change, don't change. Just say to them, Satan, get these behind me. Too late. I done fellowship with light. And darkness can't live. Darkness can't live here no more. He said, but watch what he say to him. Go ahead and finish. We got to finish. Go ahead. For this is the will of God. It is the will of God. Your sanctification. That you be sanctified. What sanctifies? Sanctified means to be set apart. But what sanctifies you? And the word is what? Truth. truth. Until you get the truth, you cannot be, you will look just like the world look. And you can speak the truth, but not be a doer of it. Satan know how to speak it. He just don't want to do it. He know how to say forgiveness. He just won't forgive. Some of us know what I'm talking about. Go ahead. That you abstain from sexual immorality, mm -hmm. that each of you should know how to possess your own vessel. Somebody scream! He said, everybody in my kingdom should know how to possess his own body. If you're sanctified and the word of God be hidden inside, if truth is now in your heart, he said, possess, control your body. See, when you don't have God, your body control you. But he said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That thing that's working in me has now given me power to control me. How many of y'all know my flesh won't to, but my spirit say you won't go, you won't do it, you won't do it, you won't do it. See, the spirit of God that sanctifies you gives you power. That's why he said, no, I don't know. We don't have a form or a fashion of God in this denying the power. What power? The power of that word bringing you in control of holiness. The power of that word manifesting the glory of God. He says, Saint, he said that that word will cause you to be sanctified, give you power. I like, I like how he said it too. He said, possess your vehicle. Possess, even you know what? That, it's funny about when you think about the word possession to ownership yeah. or to be possessed, to be taken control of. He said, I want you to take ownership and control over your body. Yes. Stop talking about hormones, stop talking about all that stuff. I have put inside of you something greater, Hallelujah. I've given you truth, possess you through the Spirit of God. He said, Possess. He said, that's how he's giving you the answer on how you stop sexual immorality. Right. Sanctify yourself. Get fellowship with the word. And the word will teach you how to possess you. Like, you know, they call it loose. They call you shown. They call it, they got all these names. All, all they're really saying is that you're broken. But he said, let me, possess, let me come in and heal you and, put, and teach you how to possess your own body. Yeah. That you're no longer led by the emotions and the feelings of what you feel, but you're led by truth. How many of y'all know feelings and emotions get you in trouble? They'll have you laying down with somebody you don't even know. That's so true. Tomorrow, I, I thought I loved you. Keep on reading. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel uh -huh. in sanctification. In sanctification. Possess his own vessel in what? In sanctification. In sanctification. Know how to keep his own body apart from sin through the word of God. Go ahead. And in honor. And oh, he said, you should possess, I like my Bible says, and holiness and honorable. He said, your body is holy and it's honorable. He said, possess your body in sanctification because the word has revealed to you that you are holy and honorable. You deserve to be treated with honor. When something is honorable, it deserves respect. See, 
when I fellowship with the word. See, I can tell you this. See, I was a homemonger. So when I answered the call to Christ and I began to fellowship with the word, the spirit of the word of God began to reveal this to me and said, no, no, son, you're honorable. You're holy. You're not a thug. You're not a gangster. You're not a dog. You are, you, are, you are called to be a king. He began to tell me the truth, and the truth began to transform my mind, which transformed my behavior. See, after being with him, after being in fellowship with truth, I could never be the same. But you know what? I like the Thessalonians. Let, let's, go to, let's go to 2 Timothy. Hold up, hold up. There was something else he said on there that was powerful too. Why do you need to do that? Keep reading. Not in passion of lust. He said, I don't want you no longer operating in your passion of lust. Stop moving in your feelings and your desires. No longer should you move in your feelings and desires. You've been possessed by the word of God, by truth. My body feel one thing, but I will not deny the truth. Go ahead. Not in passion of lust, like mm -hmm. the Gentiles. He who, said, like the unsaved who go around operating in their feelings and emotions. And then want to call it love when it's really hatred. See, those who operate like that, he said, they're the Gentiles. They are unsaved. Go ahead. Who don't know God. He said, they don't know God. That's why they, that's why they operate like that. They don't know truth. When, how many of you know when you was in the world, you did what you wanted to do with your body? Because you didn't know God. You didn't know truth. But when you got that call, hey, time to come home, baby. Go, go ahead. That no one should take advantage of. This is what he's saying. See, God is saying in the house of prayer, the reason why you got to operate in the word, the reason why the word sanctify you, that nobody take advantage of. And defraud his brother. That you will not hurt your brothers and sisters. He said, this shall, among the saints, this shall not be. He said, read it again. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do Don't not know like God. Don't be like the Gentiles, the unsaved, moving in the lust of their flesh, in the house of God, the house of prayer. Go ahead. That no one should take advantage of. That you don't use your flesh to deceive, to take advantage of your brothers and sisters in the house of God. You weren't here trying to slay somebody. Because you're not really a Christian. you unsaved. You're a Gentile moving in the desires of your flesh. But God said, you better serve. Come on, I'm, I'm going to give you the answer. Answer the phone call. After being with me, you'll never be the same. You will not want that no more because now you want what's good. And everlasting. Mary said, Mary said, God said, she chose that which is good and everlasting. He said, you want that thing good and everlasting? Or you just want to drink from the, or you want to just drink that water that has you thirsty again? He said, I, when I read that, I said, he said, because I don't want you among my sons and daughters operating in your lust. Hurting them. Isn't that what he said? He's, he said, the, the, bro, the sons and, the, what he said, the brothers. That no one should take advantage of so and you defraud won't take, his brother in this manner. Do not take advantage or fraud your brother or sister in this manner. When you've been in fellowship with the word of God, you will not take advantage or defraud your brothers and sisters in this manner. Why? Because the word of God should be teaching you how to love your brothers and sisters, not to destroy them. We will see this in the book. Now watch this. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Are we learning something? Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. Hold up. No, Second Thessalonians. That's where we're going right now. Stay with me.
Give me a second. Go to the first chapter. Excuse me. Go to the first chapter, read the first verse. So, I mean, I'm sorry. Second Thessalonians, the first chapter. Yes. Second Thessalonians, chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren. I want you to circle that. When we get the word of God, the men, the Bible says, do not make it grievance for the preachers and those who are over your soul. He says to the church of Thessalonians, he said, we thank God for you. He says, when I preach the word of God, we thank God for you. But watch what he says. Why do we thank God for him? Go ahead. As is fitting... Because your faith grows exceedingly. He says, we thank God for you, number one, because your faith grows more and more. He says, we thank God for you. Because, see, any man or woman of God is going to be truly thankful over a sheep that their faith begins to grow. You don't want them to become stagnant. You want their faith to grow more and more, to increase in the word of God. Faith come by what? Hearing. Hearing the word of God. He says, we, we, we thank God for you because your faith grows more and more. Go ahead. Because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. He said, and, and, and I love how my Bible says, number two, this is number two. And the love, and the love all of you have for one another is increasing. He says, when your faith is abounding, your, as your faith abounds, your love is increasing for one another. See, watch this. That is so powerful because like, see, when God took me to the word in Thessalonians and he talked about that, he says the reason he sanctified you through the word of God that you don't entangle your brother, but when you grow in faith, your love increases for your brother. Come on. See, y'all better get this. See, there's a, there's, a church, there's a church going around that's talking about they increasing in knowledge and they think they're growing. No, to really grow in faith means to increase in love toward the brethren. To grow in the word of God, you will increase in love toward one another. Why? Because how you going to grow, how you going to be in fellowship with forgiveness and not increase in love with your brother? How are you going to be in fellowship with mercy and not increase in love with your sister? How are you going to be in fellowship with kindness and not be in... And see, when you are in fellowship with truth, truth causes you to increase in love with one another. See, when you are sanctified by the word, then you don't have to worry about... Because well, I mean, if I sex my brother or I curse him out, I hate my brother. I hate my sister. But when I got in fellowship with love, that fellowship now is through the word of God, which my actions now reveal that I love my brother and sister. I won't kiss you because I love you. I won't lie to you because I love you. I won't, I won't talk about you behind your back because I love you. I won't slander you because I love you. My the love of God has taught me how to deal with you. And see, he's talking to a church that has increased in faith. Their faith has increased more and more, but their love has increased. And when you grow in the word of God, when you grow in truth, guess what? That it ain't, a, it, I know it's good to see a, I, the, 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 the sick raised and, and the blind see, that's all that's good. But how do you love somebody? He says, when you begin to be in fellowship with my word, you'll be slow to speak and quick to listen. When you're in fellowship in my word, you will esteem another higher than yourself. When you're in fellowship in my word, you don't do evil for evil. He said, you'll know them by their fruit. And yet, we continue to try to get to know somebody by their works. 
Why do you say by their fruit? Because their fruit is the intentions of their work. If their fruit is wrong, and even though their works look good, their fruits can be perverted. Wrong intention, wrong motive. He said by fruit, because fruit is the divine nature of God. Love, joy, peace. He said know them by their fruit because their works can be motivated by another spirit. People give away on Thanksgiving. People give away turkeys and they do all that. They're not giving away because of the love of God. They're giving away because of tax write-off because they look good. Some of them doing they not. Their intentions or motives is not, has nothing to do with God. He said, know them by their food. Somebody can take you out to dinner, take you to a movie, take you to Orlando, spend all this time with you, but their fruit is rotten. They're doing, they doing it to get into your pants. You can do nice things and not be a nice person. So he said, know them by their fruit. He, what is he saying to us? Go deeper, try the spirit, examine it, test it, and see what the heart. He said, see if the word, you better get this. He said, I hide the word in my heart because the heart functions the rest of the members of the body. He said, if the word is, he said, watch this. If the heart is full of the word, then the members will be yield to righteousness and holiness. But he said, who you yield your members to, that's your father. Who you yield your body to, that's who's operating the heart. Because if you get sanctified, sanctified means to be set apart. Set apart by what? The word of God. I'm in this world, but I'm no longer of this world. Why? I've been set apart by truth. And the word now tells me how to conduct and to behave myself, which brings glory to my father. And when I grow in faith, I increase in love. Now watch this. And when you, I like the last one. And when you increase in love, what do he say? So that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God. See, you said, what's he said? He said, when we get like this, they can boast about you. We found out last week that guess what? That they, that, they, that, they, that, they, that they became a model, a model to the churches around them on the way that they loved God in the way, because the Bible said they received the word, say received. They received the word not as it came from humanity, but they received it as it came from God. I want to tell you something. When the word of God be going forth, don't let nobody distract you. Don't be late. Don't be, do not treat the word like it's a common thing. It's the the very truth that's going to transform you it's the thing that you need to be in fellowship with that's going to wash the, and cleanse your dirty filthy heart yeah. it's the word that's why when we get saved when God he wants to bring you to himself stop trying to fill your void with another person stop trying to fill your void with, a, with, with business and employment sit down and let the one who created you begin to fill the void of your heart that whatever you may do after that in word or in deed you will do in the name of Jesus Christ giving thanks to the father giving glory to your father that's why. Why don't we have a choir? Why don't they have these things? Why? Because this is a discipleship class. You are brought here to learn how to walk in the word of God. You are brought here to hear the word of God. That's why I can't preach nothing else. And if you don't harden your heart and let pride say, I know this, I got this. You will never be the same. You will change. And I'm going to tell you, you got to do, you got to, see, I get tired. What do you do is next Sunday, next Thursday, I'm busy. Next Sunday, somebody call you. Because Satan, no, you cannot watch it. He says, after being with you, how can you change and not be with him? See, someone, I can read at home. Yes, you can. But the Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of the brethren. The Bible says, why? Because guess what? You can read at home and you should. You can fellowship at home, you should. But you know what? When you come among the brothers, there's some who has God called, brought to a higher level than you. There are some that God has brought deeper. There are some that can sharpen you. That can sharpen you. There are some that can pray for you. There are some that can stand in the gap for you. You need to, don't ever let the enemy isolate you. When he isolates you, he's setting up to kill you. 
why Jesus sent them out two by two. And don't let no, the enemy, I don't need nobody. Oh, I don't need nobody but King Jesus. Well, Jesus set it up. To me. He set it up that you need people. He said, how can you say you love me whom you cannot see and not love your brother whom you see every day? He said, you know you have come out of darkness and death in the way that you love the brethren. He said, ah, the world will know your love for me in the way that you love others. Well, I've been hurt. I've been rejected and been despised. Well, go to the one who can heal the brokenhearted. But don't you start, but don't you tell God, I'm not going to love nobody. I'm not going to tr trust them and love them through Jesus Christ. Read, finish that, and we're going to be finished for the day. We ourselves boast of you mm -hmm. among the churches of God mm -hmm. for your patience and faith in all of your persecutions and tribulation that you endure. He said, number three, a church, no, let's, let's, go, let's go over them real quick before we, your faith, say it with me, say, your faith, your faith. is growing more and more. Growing more. Number one. Number two, and the love, the love. all of you have, for one another increases. And guess what? Say, number three, you can stand through persecution. He said a church that can stand through trials and persecution. How do we know that's effective? He said, when you've been tempted on every side, when you're going to do a temptation, you receive a crown of righteousness. He said you can walk with authority through temptation. He said this church fulfilled that. And they boast about them to other churches because what they were saying, don't tell me it can't be done. Thessalonians is a model. But how did Thessalonians become so powerful? Because they stopped looking at the messengers and began to say, this message is from God. I need to give it my undivided attention. I need to receive it in my heart and allow it to work inside of me. You know what I found out? People are coming to the house of God and your ears are dull. They are dull for many reasons. But they are dull. And God often says to us, don't let me shake you up to open up your ears. Don't let me shake you up to open up your ears. Because God, God has a plan for us. Amen. God has a plan for you. Look and say me. And you. God truly has a plan for us. I want you to do me a favor. Read this. Then we're going to be, read um, 2 Thessalonians. Chapter, verse 13. Second Thessalonians, second chapter, verse 13. I want you to see it laid out, then I'll finish. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation. Look at somebody say, God chose you. Look at somebody say, God chose you. From the beginning of time, he foreknew you since the beginning. For what? What did he choose you for? For salvation. So he chose you for salvation. Look at somebody say, he chose me. That's why he said you're a royal priest of the chosen people. Peculiar people. Chosen. He chose. Watch it. But watch what he say. Go ahead. Chose you for salvation. For salvation through sanctification. Through. Everybody say, through sanctification. Go ahead. By the Spirit. Watch this. By the Spirit. He chose you. <laughs> You get it? I, when I read it, my spirit blew. Yeah. He chose you. I want to read it. He says, uh, he says, watch this. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you. Brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for sanctification through. So he chose you for, saint, for salvation, but it's worked out through sanctification yeah, right. Right. by the spirit. He said, my word, in other words, is being worked out in you by the word. 
Y'all better get it. Yeah. It's being worked. See, yeah. if he chose you for sanctify, if he chose you for salvation, the sanctification, you're sanctified through my word. My word is true. It's working out your salvation That's right. with fear and trembling. The word in you is working out what God is building in you. He's working it out in you. By taking you from glory to glory. How are you being, per how are you being perfected from glory to glory? Through the word of God. Now watch this. Keep reading. For salvation. For salvation. Through sanctification. Through, through, being, through sanctification. By the spirit. By the spirit. And belief. And, and in belief the truth. in what? The truth. In the truth. And belief. In other words, how can he sanctify you if you don't believe the word is true? Your belief that the word is true bears, watch it, when the word comes, it rebukes the devourer, it sanctifies you. Now watch what happens. It begins to produce fruit. Why? Because what I used to do, I don't do no more. He who used to steal, don't steal no more, now he gives. What, what happened to him? He was chosen for sanctification. I mean, he was chosen for salvation, but through sanctification, you are sanctified through the word. So the word he heard began to set him apart. Truth, what did truth? Truth began to expose darkness. What then what happened then? He repented, turned, saw the good. Why? Because in the sanctification, through the process, heart not your heart. Because what the truth does, it turns you. That's why they said, what, when they first heard the word, when the gospel was first preached, they said, what must we do? He said, repent. They heard the truth. He said, well, repent. Be baptized. What? Be submerged in the word. It's hard to fight against the enemy when you don't allow the word of God to destroy him. Was that it on that? To which he has called you mm -hmm. by our gospel. Now you will call, he said, watch this. You will call there by the gospel they preach. Mm -hmm. But they didn't preach themselves. The, the gospel they yeah. preached was Christ Jesus. That's right. So you were called by Jesus being, Jesus being preached to salvation through sanctification, come on, working, God. come on, y'all, through belief and truth of the word of God, transforming your life, taking you from glory to glory to glory. Yes, God. Go ahead. For the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. From to, to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Therefore, brethren, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you are taught. He says, stand fast. Look at somebody say, stand fast and hold the word that you've been taught. Whether by word or by our epistle. He says, by word, by the epistles. Go ahead. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself mm -hmm. and our God and Father yes. who has loved us. Loved us. And given us everlasting consolation. Come on. And good hope by grace. Uh-huh. May he comfort your hearts. Yes. And establish you in every good work and work. Everybody say amen. amen. Come on, give God some praise. <laughs> Come on, give your father some praise. See, I need, now I want you to play that song for me again. After being with you, that's why you will never be the same. Because you were called into the fellowship of Christ Jesus, who is the word of God, which is the truth. And when you surrender to that truth, that, tr that truth, it'll take you from glory to glory to glory to glory. You were chosen, you were chosen for salvation, through sanctification. If there's anybody under my voice, they said, you know what, God, that's me, I need to, I need to surrender today. I need to surrender today. Then let the altar be the place. But I want to tell you and to tell myself, come on, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. On, Take the dullness from my ears. 